Top 10 Horrific Atrocities of the French Revolution You will never guess what the number one atrocity is. Like and subscribe for weekly videos. In the comments below, list one topic you think should be in a top 10 video and comment if you subscribe to this channel. The French Revolution made a huge difference. France's lords were supplanted practically for the time being by the most extreme government the world had ever observed. France was abruptly a signal of opportunity, liberté, égalite, fraternite was the adage of the insurgency, it is as yet used to guard radicalism today. But the upset wasn't all certain. A huge number of guiltless individuals lost their lives and the nation was conflicted between various gatherings who utilized power to smash disobedience. It drove France into tyranny and, inevitably, back to the times of rulers. Here, we've gathered together 10 of the most horrendous outrages of the French upset. 10 Beheading Louis XVI The decapitation of Louis XVI and his better half Marie Antoinette was perhaps the greatest function of the French Revolution, yet it didn't need to occur. Before he was above all else, Louis XVI hushed up, committed to his examinations and agonizingly modest. It took him seven years to perfect his union with the delightful and scaring Habsburg beneficiary. At the point when he became ruler he was wary and uncertain, anxious to be adored. In another age he would have been an incredible ruler, yet he was totally unsatisfactory to the political emergency of the time. People around him exploited his shortcoming to hold on to more force. Louis was minimal in excess of a non-entity. It was nothing unexpected when the new government casted a ballot to nullify the government right away after. Some progressives contended against executing Louis, however the upset was going all out and the public despised him. Louis XVI was executed by guillotine in January 1793. The move stunned numerous over the world since Louis had consistently been viewed as a moderate ruler. His demise irritated close by European nations and prompted a war that may have been dodged. He confronted his demise courageously, with his last breath, he excused the individuals who censured him and trusted that no more blood would be spilled. Nine toppling of statues executing Louis wasn't sufficient, soon thereafter, the renegades chose to eliminate all hint of the old rulers from the nation. They began with the burial chambers of Saint Denis, the conventional resting spot of France's royals. To start with, the bricklayers were glad just to demolish the old Carolingian sculptures and different images of eminence. However, inside a month they were pounding into the old vault that held the rulers from the House of Bourbon. At the point when they were in, they began decimating the old final resting places. A portion of the royal remaining parts were put out there in the open, while others were unloaded into an enormous entombment pit, to cries of euphoria from the group. Numerous individuals came to watch, so numerous that the workers attempted to accomplish their work. As per observers, individuals from the group got at the bodies when they could, taking wanderer hairs, teeth and different things as close to home keepsakes. These demonstrations were later denounced both inside France and over the world, however at that point it was too late. After the Bourbon Restoration, the lords were recovered from the pit and moved to the tomb in the basilica, yet the harm was at that point done, a significant number of the rulers were unrecognizable. 8. The law of suspects The unrest began in light of the fact that the dissidents needed everybody to be free and equivalent. After they won, however, their annoyance didn't reach a conclusion, all things considered, they began chasing down any individual who may be a danger. This period is presently known as the Reign of Terror, and it brought about huge number of guiltless deaths. The Reign of Terror began with the Law of Suspects, which allowed the administration the ability to blame practically anybody for being a revolutionary. They assaulted the ministers, who were driven underground, for some time, being Catholic was really unlawful. At long last, any individual who may have been associated with the old aristocrats could be detained and executed. Over two years around 500,000 individuals were blamed, an immense number for the time. So many were denounced, truth be told, that the detainment facilities were excessively full and individuals must be put under house capture. In spite of the fact that most were inevitably permitted to walk free, around 16,000 individuals were murdered, and a large number more passed on in jail. Under the law, anybody whose lead, relations or language, showed them to be, hardliners of oppression, and adversaries of freedom was captured and put being investigated. Seven Lyon erased not every person in France upheld the unrest. The city of Lyon sponsored the moderate Girondins, a gathering who were important for the transformation yet were not as homicidal as the others. The revolutionary chiefs looked at Lyon as a focal point of traditionalist help, so they laid attack to it in 1793. Throughout the span of the battling about 2,000 individuals were executed in Lyon and the city was won. 
the progressives had won, yet they had further designs for the city. In October, the National Convention gave an announcement calling for Lyon to be devastated. Every individual who lived in Lyon was to have their weapons removed. They would be given to progressives. Any structure possessed by the rich was to be destroyed, leaving just the homes of poor people, plants, and some monuments. They even wanted to cleanse the city's name from history. The city's name would be deleted, Lyon would be called Liberated City, Vila Franchi, all things considered. They intended to assemble a segment with an engraving on it saying, Lyon made battle on liberty, Lyon is no more. Fortunately, this venture was rarely wrapped up. Six Durandans executed France's new government had two principal gatherings, the Durandans and the Montagnats. The Durandans were moderates, they needed to assemble a free, industrialist, popularity-based nation where everybody had a state by the way they were controlled, paying little heed to what their identity was. They were upheld across France yet the individuals of Paris enjoyed the Montagnards more. They were radicals who needed everything leveled. Anybody seen as first class needed to surrender their status or be executed. The gatherings managed everything well regardless, yet dropped out over Louis passing. The Montagnards needed to slaughter him, however the Durandans needed the nation to decide on it. The Montagnards said they were plotting to spare the ruler and brought them traitors. Things bubbled over in the city of Paris. A gathering of fighters and residents encompassed the administration structures and requested the Durandans be kicked out of the legislature. The Montagnards appropriately did as such. A few Durandans had the option to get away, however a couple of months after the fact, the individuals who were left were gathered together and guillotined. Five Durandans executed the city of Nantes was a focal point of upheaval, however a great part of the wide open encompassing it was traditionalist. The area ascended in defiance, prompting the Battle of Nantes. After this, the new French government chose to cleanse the city of any individual who actually upheld the government. To do this, they sent Jean-Baptiste Carrier, one of their most dedicated supporters. Jean-Baptiste accepted his position genuinely. In around five months, somewhere in the range of 12,000 and 15,000 individuals were killed by his request. Nantes lies on the Loire, which Jean-Baptiste called the public bath. He and his men constructed unique pontoons called lighters which were explicitly intended for suffocating detainees. The prisoners would be shackled to one another, regularly stripped, and crowded onto the vessels, which had secret entryways on the base. The pontoons were then sunk with the detainees ready. The elderly, pregnant ladies and youngsters were totally suffocated without distinction. In the end Jean Baptiste's strategies were excessively extraordinary in any event, for the insurgency, he was reviewed to Paris by the Committee of Public Safety, put being investigated and executed by guillotine. For law of 22 prairie or throughout the reign of terror, a huge number of individuals were detained, some for ludicrous reasons. By June 1794, the penitentiaries of France, especially Paris, were stuffed, so move must be made. Robespierre and his partners drafted another law which would permit preliminaries to be closed a lot speedier, they pushed this law through the convention and it was passed on the 10th of June 1794. It implied that individuals could be put being investigated for straightforward things like getting out phony news or trying to rouse debilitation. Residents were required to face or report their neighbors on the off chance that they communicated any sort of resistance to the government. When these individuals were put being investigated, they weren't dealt with reasonably, the adjudicators and jury just had three days to arrive at a resolution, and they needed to pick whether to permit the charge to go free or be put to death. This new law denoted the start of the Grand Terror. Executions every day expanded significantly across France, and the majority of those killed were without a doubt blameless. The Grand Terror reached a conclusion following two months, however not on the grounds that individuals were astonished by the killings. No, the new law had additionally made it so individuals from the convention could now be put being investigated. Hoping to protect their own skins, the individuals from the convention eliminated Robespierre and guillotined him, stopping the killings. 3. The massacre in the Vendée The insurgency should be a development that liberated the French lower classes and gave them freedom and security. However, any individual who contradicted the new government was brutally rebuffed, even the individuals who were lower class. In the good old days, the congregation was singled out for its abundance and overabundance. The progressive government veered among secularism and another state religion, the cult of the supreme being, yet they were joined in their longing to demolish the old Catholic system. In the Vendée, nonetheless, individuals ascended to shield their ministers and places of worship from the new progressive government. At the point when the legislature requested them to frame a recruit military unit, they revolted, consolidating in nearby civilian armies which were on the whole known as the Catholic and Royal Army. This frightened the new government, 
who sent the military to handle the issue. After a progression of pitched fights, the Catholic and Royal Army was defeated. But the administration didn't stop there. Resolved to forestall another such uprising, the administration sent General Louis Marie Taro with 12 segments of troops to decimate to Vendée. Ranches, towns, supplies, and backwoods were wrecked, and the fighters murdered without limitation. At the point when it was finished, General Francois Joseph Westerman composed a letter back to the administration saying, There is no more Vendée. According to the requests that you gave me, I squashed the kids under the feet of the ponies, slaughtered the ones who, in any event for these, won't bring forth additional scoundrels. I don't have a detainee to rebuke me. I have eliminated all. To law of the maximum in contrast to numerous different barbarities on this rundown, the law of the maximum was executed with honest goals, however the legislature had to do it. Perhaps the most compelling motivation individuals joined the insubordination in any case was on the grounds that food was excessively costly, however by 1793 even the essentials were returning up in cost. The Maddens, an assortment of hostile to first-class protesters who may today be called Marxists, contended that the respectability had been supplanted by avaricious shippers. Move was expected to make away their riches and help the poor. The government passed the law of the maximum accordingly. It set a greatest cost for merchandise, from bread and wine to iron and shoes. Shippers needed to show a rundown of costs outside their stores and, if any of their costs were over the most extreme, they would be fined. Rather than heading off to the administration, the fine went to whoever educated the specialists about the illicit valuing, urging individuals to betray traders who disregarded the law. It disastrously affected France. While vendors marked down their costs, it left them with practically no cash. The less legitimate retailers started watering down their products, masking debris as ground pepper, starch as sugar and pear juice as wine. Ranchers in rustic territories started accumulating their produce since they couldn't get an adequate cost in the urban communities, implying that individuals in the urban communities starved. The result was an underground market where the rich could at present purchase the products they required, while the poor had no admittance to food by any stretch of the imagination. These starvations were fixed incidentally when the administration sent officers to take food from the ranches and carry it to the city forcibly, however this solitary caused more distress. The 1st of September massacres after Louis was murdered, the administration fell into tumult. Nobody realized who was in control. Meanwhile the Paris Commune, who were upheld by the equipped horde, had all the force. Turmoil ruled as the new government battled about who ought to be in power, close by issues like the economy, the military, and the equity system. What overwhelmed, notwithstanding, was a dread of traditionalist kickback. The new development had been decried in Britain, Austria, and Prussia, and Wallingard not too far off. Then, French traditionalists were gathering support in different pieces of the nation. The progressives expected that, if a traditionalist armed force was to assault Paris, the new progressive government would fall. Specifically, they came to accept that the detainees of the city's jails would get together with the counter-progressives whenever given an opportunity. These feelings of dread were exacerbated when it came time for the new armed force to leave the city, with individuals trusting it would leave the city helpless against a jail break. Between the 2nd and 6th of September 1792, the prisoners were assaulted by progressive hordes, with more than 1,000 being killed in about a solitary day. A large portion of the city's whole jail populace was slaughtered, with cadavers left ravaged in the roads. The progressive government sent letters to local governments saying that plotters in the city's jails had been executed. The demonstration was rehashed somewhere else, murders of detainees occurred in 75 of France's 83 officers.